Hello again, this is me coming back to you as I promised on a completely different subject. So, got a little bit of advice from eHacker the other day that the more I make vids on certain subjects, the more likely that they are going to show up in a search engine. <clears throat> So, I know this has been done by people with more qualifications than me, but I do think with my background of over a decade in both social work, political science, and being an advocate for over a decade, I do have a pretty good eye when it comes to mental illness. So, without further ado, this is going to be the Lady Autist's evaluation of the behaviors that I have noticed throughout the media with AH in regards to the whole AH versus JD case. So, without further ado, time to get out my little blue book. If you've seen some of my other videos, it's Probably, I'm hoping, a little infamous by now. <clears throat> so, I went ahead and wrote down some of the traits that I see most prevalent and have been since this whole case got started. Uh, one of the most prominent, especially right now, is her many exhibitions of paranoia. Now, this starts right now with the Russian box. All of us who are supporting JD are obviously Russian bots. Um, also, right now, for current wanting to subpoena our Twitter accounts for those of us who are supporting Johnny Depp over her, uh, how Johnny is somehow this maniacal mastermind who is controlling all of us and telling us to create all of these accounts. Uh, her paranoia about Adam Waldman and his supposed connections to Russia. Uh, there's been other things that have shown p paranoia, but right now these are paramount. Uh, what other things has she shown? Well, obviously, if you've been over at Incredibly Average Brian, and you've listened to the tapes in their entirety, as I have, uh, one of the things that really comes up is it seems like A.H. really has abandonment issues. Like, any time that J.D. would just have enough and feel the need to leave lest the situation continue to escalate, she would then display this almost childlike fear of abandonment that he was just going to walk away with from her and never show up again. Now, this is just speculation on my part. A lot of folks that do have abandonment issues have some sort of trauma back in their childhood of some kind. Uh, maybe a parent left. Um, most often this features in divorce. It doesn't appear to be the case with her parents, but there are definitely abandonment issues there. Um, also the violent behavior. She talks on the tapes about how sometimes she, she just can't control that anger and it would just burst out of her. So. That is not ordinary. Most of us, even when we get to the point of that level of anger, do have still enough ability to control ourselves like JD and simply just remove ourselves from the situation instead of bursting out into illogical, violent behavior. Um, also, there's this childlike retaliation example the, the leaving of the turd in the bed. Now that is not normal adult behavior. That's a retaliation that I would expect from a toddler as opposed to a grown adult woman. So that shows me that there's something obviously really, really wrong there. Um, her attention sinking. 
almost to the extreme. She'll do anything to get that attention on her, whether it is positive or negative. And that is the very telling part. When you're willing to do anything for attention, positive or negative attention, again, that speaks to maybe childhood trauma, maybe she was ignored as a child, but uh, definitely something there. And I also noticed on those tapes that she does have a tendency to talk in circles. Um, as an autistic, I, I am very familiar with what I call circular thinking, where you just keep revolving and coming back and coming back and coming back to a particular theme, uh, whereas I would tend to internalize that, uh, she tends to vocalize it. She would just keep coming back and coming back and coming back to the same subject over and over and over, and each time she would bring it up again, she would become increasingly agitated. Um, pathological lies. It uh, just seems to me, with all the evidence that is against her, it's like, it's almost like she can't control herself, you know? She, it just comes out of her before she can even clap her mouth shut, so to speak. So, continuous just pathological lies. Um, also notice her behavior is a little bit manic um, with her body language when she was uh, giving her side of the story back in 2016, her body movements, her tone of voice, something about it just seemed very, very manic to me. Um, another thing that I noticed is a lot of people with mental illness, they will go ahead and self-medicate. Um, whether it be pills or alcohol or just something else that is obviously bad for you, something that's going to numb your mind um, and just stop these manic behaviors that you are suffering from. So in my assessment, after over a decade of working with folks with dual diagnosis, uh, disability and mental illness. I'm not going to diagnose her with a specific mental illness. I do not have the credentials for that nor the training. But from what I've seen from her behaviors, there's definitely some real mental issues that are going on right now. And as this case continues, it's like I'm watching her deteriorate and sink further into those mental issues as this continues to go on and she continues to prolong these claims. Alright, so that's my assessment on that. Now I do want to state in the case of mental illness. So, with these folks I do try to approach with a certain level of empathy because they can't help their behaviors. But at the same time, when you have multiple people, and we're not just talking JD here, we're also talking people even on her side, doctors, uh, other people who have listened to the tapes across the world and they are all coming to the same conclusion that they are also noticing these traits. But you continue and choose to persist in your self-destructive and outward destructive behavior. You've got to be held accountable. You can have a mental illness and I'm very sorry if that is the case. I know it's difficult to deal with. I have PTSD, and I can certainly feel from you from that angle. However, that does not give you the right to abuse, manipulate, and destroy other people's lives. At some point, you have to start taking accountability 
for your own actions. I am hoping maybe at some point a light bulb will come on for her and she will get the help she needs. I'm thinking that it's probably highly unlikely. Uh, she seems like the type that would continue to deny that anything is wrong with her. Uh, and so she's just not given any other choice. Also, the thing about mental illness is until you admit to yourself that there is a problem, until you admit that there is something wrong, and you are actually willing within yourself, not for somebody else, but you're willing to admit, I have a problem, and I need to get help, and you actually want to get better, nothing is going to change, and that destructive behavior will continue into every single relationship. So, what I'm looking for, what I would hope, is that she, John, Johnny gets justice, first of all, of course. Uh, number two, that hopefully sometime in the future, she gets this addressed so another person doesn't get hurt. Alright, folks, well, I appreciate your time today. I know this isn't as in-depth as some of my fellows, but I just want to kind of throw my thoughts in there. Uh, you see this. I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.